doing a message on Nephilim among us, the Nephilim among us. And in the first part, we've already covered a lot of information. We're asking in the second part, uh, obviously the ancients cared about demigods, but surely modern people have evolved beyond this cult of hybrid demigods. Is the subject of the Nephilim a mere tangent? We've covered in the first session that we name our planets after the Nephilim, we name our days after the Nephilim, we name our months after the Nephilim, we name our chemicals after the Nephilim, and we name some of our continents and an ocean after the Nephilim. But surely we, modern people, have evolved beyond this now. Would you agree? Sorry. I have to take you to Starbucks. What's on every Starbucks cup? Nephilim. It's a siren, which is a half-fish, half-woman, or a half-bird, half-woman hybrid, that, that lures sailors to their death with their songs. And you can see the evolution of the Starbucks uh, marketing plan of their logo. They just copied a 15th century siren and put it straight on their logo. But over time, they just kind of used a little bit of artistic uh, license and they just rounded it out so it doesn't look, there's some details there, I won't point out the details, some of it's a bit rude, but um, they've just changed it, but it still is the Nephilim sirens. And here is a siren luring a young sailor to his death. She's a hybrid. How about Versace? Huh? What is Versace about? Yeah, that real pretty woman, Medusa with a head of snakes instead of hair who turns you into stone if you look at her. What is she? She's a hybrid, a Nephilim. And that's the symbol of one of the most luxurious brands. Hmm, interesting. Nephilim among us, our biggest sports competition on the planet. I, I would say it's the biggest event that brings the entire planet together. What is it? The Olympics named after Zeus and the Olympian gods who ruled from Mount Olympus, all Nephilim. It's a tribute to the Nephilim. In fact, in the old days when they had the Olympics, they would offer uh, sacrifices and offerings to the Olympian gods. Uh, the next Olympics, Rio uh, in 2016, again, carrying the, the name of the Olympian gods to the world. Let's go to sports. Nike. Ever heard of Nike? What's Nike? Sports brand? Manufacturer of sports clothing? Wrong. It's Nephilim. Goddess of victory. She's a Nephilim. In fact, uh, when I went to Ephesus, uh, I saw this exact stone. This is Nike, the goddess of victory. Amazon. What's Amazon? You thought Amazon was a place that you go online to buy stuff, right? Wrong. Bunch of Nephilim, a race of female warriors whose name meant without breasts, amazos in Greek, or killer of men. Is that nice? Some of them are hybrids of Ares or Mars and mortal uh, humans. Who are they? They're a race of female warriors that would cut one of their breasts off so that they could fight more viciously. And the myth is they either cut the breasts off or they burn their breasts off. And they were feared everywhere. A race of female Nephilim. What's this? The Odyssey. You thought the Odyssey was a, was a car. No, it's not. It's the Greek epic about Ulysses and the ancient hybrid Nephilim that he met all over the place. That's the Odyssey. What's, what's your Achilles? Your Achilles tendon is a tendon that is named after the god, the demigod Achilles, whom Brad Pitt played uh, in a movie. He's the hybrid son of goddess Thetis and Peleus, who is a friend, a mortal, a friend of Hercules. Now, Thetis tried to make him immortal by dipping him in the river Styx. Remember the river that separates our world from hell? But the part by which he held him which was his ankle, was left vulnerable. And so in one battle, Paris, who's a man, shot Achilles in the heel and killed him. Today, a person's weakness is called his Achilles heel. Why? It's named after a hybrid Nephilim. 
Hollywood just can't get enough of demigods. They can't come up with any new stories that makes more money or sells better. So they made Thor recently, a tribute to the Norse god of Thunderbolt, a Nephilim. Uh, this is Arnold Schwarzenegger in one of his early, early uh, roles on cinema. He's played uh, Hercules, half god, half human, son of Zeus and Alk, Alkmini, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. And a movie that's coming up next year, Hercules again. Uh, it's going to be played by Dwayne Johnson or The Rock, coming out August next year, 2014. They, they just can't get enough of these demigods. People like them. Twilight, vampire breeds with a female human to produce hybrid. X-Men, genetically engineered superhumans, hybrid. Yeah, real pretty, aren't they? And they always look so evil, huh? We just can't get enough of hybrids. See, we, it's so easy to look back at the Greeks and the Romans and say how foolish they were. But think about how much money people spend because of their belief about this stuff. Now, there is a Christian allegory called The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis in which many hybrids are featured. Here is a satire, which is a half-man, half-goat. He's a Nephilim. Here's a centaur, half-man, half-horse, Nephilim. Here's Planet of the Apes, genetically engineered apes with human genes for enhanced intelligence, hybrid. They're, they're, they're making another one. Evolution becomes revolution, the rise of the Planet of the Apes. That hasn't come out yet, has it? I think that's coming out. Hybrid, right? When aliens come in Hollywood movies, what do they want? Huh? They want human genes for manipulation. They want to make genetically modified organisms. Hollywood loves genetic engineering. We just can't get enough of it. Tom Cruise in a recent movie, Oblivion. He's a drone repairman, Tech 49. Jack Harper finds his genes have been taken by aliens to create a reprogrammed race of humans. Interesting, isn't it? How so many things from the ancient time until now points to something. It points to something in the past that evidently happened according to the Bible, and it seems like something that is also on the horizon. Now the question is, why should Christians care? I've left this part to the second session. I normally do this part first where I give you scriptures, but I left it here because I thought I'd grab your attention first and show you how pervasive, how ubiquitous the Nephilim are in our lives. Are you convinced? Yeah, Nephilim are among us. We should care because it's in the Bible. We know that the rabbis name seven demigod hybrids in the Bible, the Nephilim, the fallen ones, the Rephaim, the dead ones, the Anakim, the Zamzumim, the Imim, the Giborim, and the Avim. They named seven of them. This is not just some tangent thing. And they did not take it as myth. There are hybrids in heaven, in case you didn't know. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 10, talks about a creature that I think you would be shocked to meet on the street. Here's what he looks like. As for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man. Each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side. Each had of the four had the face of an ox on the left side. Each of the four had the face of an eagle. Imagine meeting one of these. If you can't get along with someone because their skin color is slightly different from you, you're going to be unpleasantly surprised by heaven. Because there is so much more diversity in heaven, and God's saying, get used to it. I'm a God of diversity. I like making things, but I want to make them. You are not allowed, you're not authorized to tamper with the genetic code. Revelation chapter 4, verse 7, mentions it again, a hybrid in heaven. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man. The fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. And it's all like, 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 like. He just couldn't find the words to describe it. There are definitely some strange creatures in heaven. Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 9 to 10, in the New Living Translation, he said, I looked, and each of the four cherubim had a wheel beside him. 
and the wheels sparkled like beryl, like a jewel. All four wheels looked alike and were made of the same, were made the same. Each wheel had a second wheel turning crosswise within it. That's a strange creature. If you think about it, it's not that strange because we have one thing that is a perfect circle in our makeup. It's our eye. Our eye is the, the, the only perfect circle that I see in our body. But God likes it, and so God made some creatures with a bunch of perfect circles all over, uh, I guess, with a bunch of wheel-looking things around them. So we need to know that it's in the Bible because once we understand this, the context will help us understand the Bible. It will help you understand things like why there was a flood of Noah, why God commanded the total annihilation of the Can Canaanites, because there were some strange things happening in that time, a genetic engineering, a genetic manipulation at that time. Why should Christians care? Because it's predicted to happen again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9, that which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 37, in the NIV, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. That leaves it really open. As it was in the days of Noah, you have to ask, well, what happened in the days of Noah? Why was it that God had to destroy the whole world and save only eight people. He would have saved more, but only eight people decided to believe God. And everyone else was killed. Why? Because there was this genetic manipulation going on. Genesis 6, read it yourself, describes the genetic experiment that produced hybrids during Noah's day and brought judgment, a severe judgment, on the entire world. And then Jesus compares what's about to come to that. He says something preceded that catastrophe, and the same thing will precede the ultimate catastrophe. 2,000 years later, after Genesis 6, Israel was mandated to wipe out Canaan because of a repeat in genetic manipulation. We know that it happened because who did they meet when they entered Canaan? They met the giants. Aberrations of nature. Manipu uh, genetic mutants. One of them was named Goliath. And look at David dragging Goliath's head. That's not just a a tall man that is a hybrid. According to the Talmud, you may not have heard this before, according to the Jewish rabbis in the Talmud, you know who Goliath's mother was? It was Orpah, the sister of Ruth. Remember Ruth said, I want to follow your God, Naomi, so I'm going to go back to Israel. But Orpah says, yeah, I'd like to go, but you know, Naomi says, you don't have to go. She says, okay, then I don't have to go. So her heart wasn't there. You watch that among believers. A lot of people say the right thing, but their heart is not in it. Orpah was that kind of human, was that kind of lady. She said the right thing, but her heart was not really in it. And then she went and married a Nephilim, and she produced these uh, giants. One of them was Goliath. So David actually killed one of his distant cousins because David is the great uh, grandson of, of Ruth. All right, and Ruth was a sister in law in law of Orpah. Then we find the Nephilim are named in the Old Testament. There's Ishi Benob. He's one of the four brothers of Goliath in 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 16. He's killed by Abishai, the son of Zuriah, which is David's nephew. Abishai is David's nephew. Zuriah is David's sister. Lami is in 1 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 5. Again, there was war with the Philistines, and Elhanan, the son of Jair, killed Lami, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Then we had a six-fingered giant in 1 Chronicles 20, verse 6. Again, there was war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature with 24 fingers and toes, six on each hand and six on each foot. And he also was born to the giant. Then we have another one in verse 7. So when he defiled Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, David's brother, killed him. So in all, there were five giants from Gath killed by David and his protégés. Is that cool? You follow someone, you do their works. Those people who followed David, who was a giant slayer, they themselves became giant slayers. I find that encouraging. By the way, this may be the possible origin for the uh, 
uh, Indian greeting how, and I'm not sure how the, the fingers are, I believe it's this way, but the American Indians would greet, them, greet each other like this, they say how, and they always show the number of fingers they have in their hands. Because according to some Native American legends, there were giants in America, and they had six fingers and six toes. Believable? Well, I believe it because it's in the Bible. Why should we care? It's happened in recent history. It's not only happened long, long time ago in ancient history, it's happened in recent history. I believe the greatest sins on earth start with the desire to create genetically engineered superhumans. And this was the desire of both Charles Darwin and Adolf Hitler. They had a desire for genetic superiority. And they, these two characters, Darwin and Hitler, they're two sides of the same coin. They believed the same thing. They were believers in what's called eugenics. Eu is Greek for good, genetics for genetics. They believed in the creation of a super race. Well, how do you create a super race? Well, they pitch it to the Germans that the potential to become gods. Have you ever heard that from someone before? Satan? The potential to become gods is well within our reach. Yeah, people like that. People get excited about genetic engineering. Yeah. Defying God now becomes scientific. And so, in the name of science, not in the name of Christianity, in the name of science, six million Jews were killed in the name of evolutionary science because it was simply survival of the fittest. What a tragedy. You know, many young people don't even learn this anymore. We're probably about to get into World War III where some of the worst stuff in the world is going to happen. And people don't even know. It was based on this, this desire for genetically enhanced humans that people allowed Hitler to do what he did. Eugenics was very popular. This is Darwin's cousin, Francis Galton. I think it's spelled with an A-G-A-L. He was uh, the father of eugenics, close relative of this fellow. Very popular. There were eugenic societies. Instead of going to church, people went to eugenic societies. Over 65,000 people were sterilized under the official eugenics programs in the United States. Here are some signs. Some people are born to be a burden on the rest. See, that's what Darwinian evolutionary science teaches people. Here's another sign. War against the weak. Your belief is foundation, is the foundation of what you do. Your belief is everything. Here's a German having his Aryan credentials checked by his nose size. But our God said that he created every human in his own image and likeness. We, all of us, are as human as Adam and Eve. There's been no evolution in the human race or any species. We've never seen any species turning into another species. Thousands were sterilized to keep the population down and the genetic pool pure. Are you hearing this argument? A lot of kids who go to university believe that the earth is overpopulated. Nonsense. We have so much. God has made this planet super abundant. We have so much resources to support way more than 7, 8, 9, 10 billion people. It's going to be a population explosion when Jesus comes back. The millennium will be full of people, and the earth is well capable of handling it. You fly across the, the world as much as I do, and you look out the window, you will find most of the planet is empty. Most of America, with 300 million people, is empty. The world was created by God to sustain lots more life. Our worth comes from not man, but from God. So Satan's temptation has always been this. The same thing that he pitched to Eve in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. The serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. If you don't believe God, if you disobey God, number one, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. The three promises of the devil, number one, longevity or immortality. Number two, intellectual superiority. Number three, deification. You'll be like God. The greatest sins on earth 
start with a desire to create superhumans. But I think there's one more reason why we as Christians should be concerned, should be aware of what the Bible and obviously lots of mythology around the world talks about. I believe it's actually happening right now. And if you're not paying attention, um, it will mi you'll miss it on your radar. There's a lot of genetic manipulation going on. This is a, an article from August 2011, Death of the Bees, Genetically Modified Crops and the Decline of Bee Colonies in North America. They found uh, dead bees. Uh, Mons uh, Monsanto, one of the biggest, I think the biggest um, company that's doing genetic modification. Monsanto genetically engineered seeds are killing off bees. And here's a comparison of bee intestines. And the black one on the left ate GMO food. So if it does that to bees, I wonder what it's doing to our children. Right now, um, well, let's take a look at uh, how many plants rely on bees. Some of those valuable fruits, vegetables, nuts, and field crops depend on insect uh, pollinators, particularly honeybees, soybeans, cottons, grapes, almonds, apples, oranges, strawberries, peanuts, peaches, blueberries. So I believe that this type of genetic modification may be, may be the culprit. It may lay out the scenario um, that Revelation talks about. Because Revelation says there's going to be mass starvation. There's going to be massive disaster. People will die. A third of the human race is going to die. How is that possible? What if the bees are dying off because of genetically modified food and then we're introducing it into the human population? What is that going to do to people? Is it a conspiracy? Some people believe that they're willfully sowing seeds of destruction, the hidden agenda of genetic manipulation. There certainly is uh, sickness from GMO on the rise. A lot of Australian children today cannot eat peanuts. A lot of Australian schools are now telling children, even if you're not allergic to peanuts, don't bring peanuts because so many Aussie kids can't even eat or be near peanuts. So these are the top 10 genetically modified foods. Do you ever eat corn, soy, anything from cotton, papaya, rice, canola, potatoes, tomatoes, dairy products, peas? Yeah, this is going into our systems right now. BBC News, uh, December 1999, Trojan gene could wipe out fish. Just one genetically modified fish could wipe out local populations of the species if released into the wild, biologists have warned. These are countries that ban GMO. The green countries say no. The red countries say yes. Unfortunately, the English-speaking world, represented there by England, says yes. And we see more sicknesses than in France. So you can see there's a difference. It's not just the red wine that the French drink. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. There's a growing use of humanized animals. That's what they call it. That's an article in 2011 in The Guardian. Humanized animals. Like this, a mouse ear hybrid. That's a mouse growing a human ear. Why are they doing that? Because they say artificial liver could be grown in other animals. And they always pitch it for the benefit of humanity. And people like that, don't they? Make you live longer. Make you immortal. Enhance your memory. Make you like God. And they're serious about this, you know. How about this? Goat spider hybrid. You heard of spider man, now it's spider goat. What do you get when you cross a spider with a goat? It may sound like a joke, but it is real. Meet spider goat, a DNA enhanced web flinging nanny that may one day knit bones. They're doing this, they're basically they're saying, the spider web is so wonderful, but we can't depend on spiders to make them because they're too little. So we'll make the goat spin spider webs, and then we can produce a lot more. How about this one? This was this year. Truth is stranger than fiction. First hamburger to be made from lab-grown meat. There you go. Mmm, delicious. How would you like some lab-grown hamburger? This this beef never lived. He's, he's not a cow that ever walked on grass, never saw the, 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 the light of the sun. He was grown in a test tube. Fortunately for, for us, right now, one of these patties would cost over $100,000 to eat. 
That's how much it costs. Mm, hey, look, my genetically modified fruit bit me back. <laughs> Franken food. They're fun food. Taiwan breeds green glowing pigs. Scientists in Taiwan say they have bred three pigs that glow in the dark. Hmm, wonderful. Look at that. They have mice that glow in the dark. Pretty soon your babies will grow in the dark. New federal guidelines will allow the creation of human animal chimeras. If you don't know, chimera is from the Greek myth. It's the mix, a hybrid of lion, snake, and goat. That's weird. That's why they call it a chimera. That's 2005. Mail online, 2011 again. 150 human animal hybrids grown in UK labs. Embryos have been produced secret secretively for the past three years. Did you know that there is a transhuman movement? The objectives of the movement, have you heard this before? Extend life, enhance intelligence, and to become like God. Yeah, I think we just read that somewhere in Genesis, didn't we? Man becoming his own God via transhumanism. They have a plan. It's called the 2045 uh, Avatar Project. These are their stages. First, make a robotic copy of the human body remotely controlled. Next stage, by 2020, make an avatar in which the human brain can be transplanted at the end of one's life. So your body can die, but we're going to take your brain and put it in another body. By 2030, we want an avatar with an artificial brain, because we don't even like your brain anymore, it might corrode, in which a human personality can be transferred at the end of one's life. And then by 2040 to 2045, their goal is to make a hologram-like avatar. So we don't even need humans anymore. And they are serious about this because they believe they can be better than God. And that's always the human deception. Whenever we tamper with God's stuff, we always make it worse. Isn't that true? God made all these fruits and vegetables and nutrients that we can eat and our food can become our medicine. But instead, we pay gazillions of dollars for pharmaceuticals to produce synthetic chemicals that are toxic and are killing us. And we say, no, we've got a better solution. It's our synthetic man-made chemicals going to make us healthy. See the deception of man? We always think we can, we can one-up God, but you can't. Well, did you know the Dalai Lama supports the 2045 project? There he is. He says, I like it. Here's the founder of a political party based on Evolution 2045. Neo-humanity. They are serious. Right? And they see that different animals have different strengths. So we don't have the sight of an eagle. We don't have the speed of a cheetah. We don't have the digestive system of other animals. If we could just manipulate the human body and genome and just put all of these different genes in, we can create a superhuman. Here's one guy who says cybernetic immortality. Is it fantasy or a scientific problem to be solved? Well, they believe the rich should be first to pay, and the rich are paying. They're joining transhumanism so that they can preserve their consciousness after they die in a perfect body. Remember Satan's three lies? You will not surely die, for God knows in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. Remember what Jesus predicted. He said this is going to happen in the last days. In chapter 24, verse 11 to 14, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. It's here, folks. It's already happening. So many people believe that they can become like God. That they don't need God. They don't need a Savior. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end, would you say endures to the end? He who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations and then the end will come. Don't put your hope in transhumanism, in genetic engineering. Put your hope in Jesus. He knew all of these things would be coming, and I think they're here. I don't know about the alien scenario. I'm not sure if the repeat of the Nephilim has to be outer space people. All that happened was some genetic manipulation. But the interesting thing that I'll close with is this. All the people that get surveyed who have who claim to have been abducted by aliens, 
all of them talk about genetic manipulation. All of them talk about their ovum or their sperm being forcefully taken out of them. So what's going on? I don't know, but every time aliens show up in Hollywood movies, they want our genes. And the scientists right now want to manipulate our genes. And God said the last two times that happened, it wasn't long before total destruction came. And Israel entered the promised land. I think the good news is that when you see all these things happening, Israel is not far from meeting her Messiah. The Messiah is the promise of all promises. That's the true freedom. So instead of looking at the negative, remember, keep your eyes up. Look at the positive. Jesus is the Messiah. Put your faith and trust in him. Amen. Let's stand. We're going to pray. Father, we thank you so much that sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. But you give us the heart and the mind to be able to comprehend these things and to be aware and to be ready for them, Lord. Whatever comes, we will not be deceived. Whatever comes, your truth has prepared us and set us free. So we just pray, Lord, that those who watch this video would be set free by lies and deceptions, maybe false paradigms of the world that they, they just bought and never considered in light of the Bible. I pray and I encourage you, if you're listening, you're watching, Open your Bible. Read the Bible. Believe the God of the Bible. He said he's coming soon to judge the living and the dead. Before that day, give your heart to Jesus and follow him. In Jesus' name I pray for you. Amen.